Okay, kiddos, this is the last video for Chapter 1, our first flipped unit in AP IBHL1 Chemistry. And again, our first three chapters have extensive review of our pre-AP concept, con concepts. Now, we were doing net ionics. This is not something we do anymore in pre-AP, unfortunately, but it reinforces our formula writing and what ions are involved in formulas and prepares us to do the predicting of reactions. So that's why I kind of pulled it in at the beginning unit here, this little quick review. So let's do first our complete formula. We have solutions of lead to nitrate. Lead is plus two, nitrate is minus one, so that's lead to nitrate. It said solution of, so that's a Q. Plus potassium iodide, K is plus one, iodide's minus one. Now, very quickly, you're going to be able to predict these products. For now, I've given them to you. We have lead to iodide, and we have potassium nitrate. Now, you need to know your solubility rules to know which one of these, or possibly both of these, are solids. And if you memorize just a few of them, if you memorize that all group ones are soluble without exception, you would identify this as aqueous. And if that's aqueous, this has to be a solid. We have to have a driving force for the reaction. Um, if you didn't know that, you would have to remember that all iodides are soluble except for lead 2, silver, and mercury 1. Okay? So those are our states. We do have to balance these. That was a change a few years ago in AP Chemistry, so now it's balanced. Now, to get the complete ionic, and I'm going to have to write small here, we're going to dissociate. I'm going to drop my states now. You don't need states when you write reactions in AP Chemistry unless it's specified in an unusual problem. Um, I liked the states in the beginning so that I know what to dissociate and what to keep intact. So I know since that's a solid, for example, that I'm going to keep that lead iodide, lead to iodide intact. And two potassiums plus two nitrates. Right, when I separate those ions, that two distributes itself. Oops, not quite hit that. Okay? Now, to get the net ionic, what we want to do is we want to cross off uh, ions that are identical on both sides of the equation. Now, nitrate is the same on both sides, so that means that nitrate is one of my spectator ions. And potassium is the same on both sides of the equation, so that's another spectator ion. And that's the only thing that crossed off. And so now we carry down everything, just rewrite it exactly as written. Don't have to worry about states anymore. Two iodides yields two lead iodides. Now we're going to be doing a little mini lab on this and you will see lead iodide and see that it's a very beautiful yellow actually kind of this color of yellow. Okay now let's try one more. We've got chlorine gas. Chlorine remember is one of your diatomics. We do not dissociate gases. We dissociate aqueous salts, we dissociate strong acids, and we dis dissociate strong bases. That's all we're dealing with, not gases. So it's bubbled through a solution of potassium's plus one, bromide's minus one. Since it said solution of, I'm going to write aqueous. It's going to form bromine. Now bromine is a liquid. It's one of the few liquids. Mercury is a liquid and bromine's a liquid in its natural state and potassium chloride. Okay. Now all group one salts are soluble without exception so potassium chloride is aqueous. We do need to balance before we go on. So there's our complete formula equation. Now let's do our complete ionic. We keep gases 
intact. We dissociate soluble salts. Sorry. We dissociate soluble salts. So I'd get 2K plus and 2Br minus, right? That 2 distributes to both. We keep liquids intact. And then I'm going to dissociate my soluble salt. So that's my complete ionic. Now to get my net ionic, I cross out things that are the same. Potassium is identical. And that's it. And so it's my potassium ion that is my spectator ion here. And so now to get my net ionic, I just carry down what remains after crossing off my spectator ions and that's what I would get for this. And what that tells me is, is this reaction is going to occur whether I used potassium, sodium, calcium, anything that's soluble, I would have this same reaction. Um, because that cation in this case, as long as it's a soluble cation, is irrelevant in terms of the actual chemistry that's occurring. And we're going to be looking at some of this chemistry in class. And so until then, this is signing off.